Good evening, everyone. Uh, there's a few still just connecting to the audio, so we'll get started in a couple of minutes if you're playing Zoom bingo alone at, uh, at home. Uh, if you're playing along at home, there's the first one for you. Thanks everyone for jumping on though, we really appreciate it. I don't see this going for more than sort of 15, 20 minutes. Um, my presentation is literally five slides um, and I'll talk a bit in between, but then I'm sure there'll be people that'll have some questions. You can see there's a few that are just struggling to join at the moment. Come on. I will just ask that um, everyone just stays on mute for the time being. We'll you can switch your microphone on if you like at the end. You don't have to have your camera on by any stretch of the imagination. This is probably a little bit more of a, almost like a webinar for the most part to begin with. And then, uh, uh, yeah, and then obviously we shift to some quick questions, but we, we should be in and out 15, 15, 20 minutes. So we'll make a start. There's number two, Zoom bingo. Um, thank you all for joining us. Uh, sorry for joining me tonight. For those that I haven't had the pleasure of meeting in person, uh, my name's Jared Moss. I'm the, the basketball development manager at, at Frankston and District Basketball Association. Um, what that role is, I've, I've probably met a number of you before in different capacities. I wear a few hats at the association, and, and um, the easiest way to probably describe the role role is that I sort of the domestic competitions. So we've got the development programs, um, the mini hoops, which I know some of your kids have done in the past. And, you know, you're coming into the Future Blues program, which is pretty scary, some of you, but mini hoops for three to five-year-olds, Aussie hoops, game ready. Um, you know, some of our individuals and, and um, rep prep in the past and programs like that, all abilities and, and really anything outside of domestic and, and blues. Um, and then I also oversee the blues program, both the senior and junior programs. Um, and uh, yeah, and then we've got our operations team um, that, that manage the competition. So it's it's a it's a it's a great role, and it allows me to meet some wonderful people. And um, this past couple of weeks, it's been really um, challenging in terms of of navigating through tryouts. It's always terrific, and um, you know, but everyone's been really understanding. Obviously, with things returning. Uh, very quickly after lockdown and then us needing to get into competitions, programs and tryouts almost instantly. So I just want to say a big thank you to all the parents, in particular our new parents, um, for being so patient and understanding. I know the last few days, particularly for you guys on tonight and those listening to the recording, it hasn't been easy as new rep parents. Um, you know, it's it's you know, it's, it's a lot of new information, a lot of terms you're probably not all that familiar with through domestic and um, we, we do our best through the FAQs and the player parent handbook and emails and things like that to provide comms, but we don't always, you know, we don't have a hundred percent strike rate, unfortunately. So that's why we offer tonight's meeting. And, and that's why I make my number and my email readily available and try and get back to you all as quickly as possible. So what we will do is we'll, we'll start with the presentation and it'll be, you know, fairly stock standard stuff to begin with. Um, can everyone just give me a thumbs up? Hopefully you can see my screen there. Blues with the new parents. Yep, perfect. All right. Uh, this works. So firstly, welcome. You know, um, welcome to Frankston Blues. You know, it's a really exciting time um, for everyone. Uh, it's really exciting for us, the coaching coordinators and the coaches to get through tryouts, to have so many people show interest in our rep program. Our junior rep program is it's just phenomenal. We had uh, all up um, by the end of the, the two weeks with the new rep player tryouts, the uh, the the Future Blues program, um, and then our tryouts. You know, in general, we had over seven hundred kids try out um, for Blues, and um, you know, for reference, around four hundred and twenty kids will make a team. You know, or be named as an emergency. So, fairly substantial operation that's undertaken over the course of about ten days this year. And and for reference, the the future blues process um, for those parents that are here, which I think is the majority, because um, you're all new, um, that started back in May. And generally, that process would be completed um, in June and we would have you guys you'd already have your uniforms and you'd be playing in some tournaments down in the country and and you know you'd have your team managers and coaches and you'd already get to know those people but unfortunately this year that couldn't occur and and lockdowns continued to uh you know lockdowns continued to sort of derail that a little bit um unfortunately and yeah so that that process would usually be undertaken well ahead of time um 
but couldn't be this year. And uh, and and also the new, even the new rep player tryouts are generally in term three before school holidays because they're not playing rep yet. So we can get those done before the rep season uh, finishes. So it all happened pretty quickly, um, as I've mentioned. But welcome. Um, we're here now. The squads are selected, and and you know I know there's been a bit of confusion, but but we're moving forward, and, and we're confident that we're going to be able to get teams on the court for some scrimmages Friday, and and then their first practice match against Casey next Friday, and then we're into it on December third grading. So, uh, really basic agenda uh, for this evening's info night. It's it's just a little bit about our pathway, which I've already spoken to a bit. Um, just the player and, and parent commitment and what that's going to look like. Player and parent code of conduct or, or, or our conduct, which is really obviously really important for us and in order to maintain that sort of level of decorum and professionalism that we expect within our Junior Blues program. Uh, and then there'll be a little bit of time for some questions. So I'll get cracking with the Junior Blues pathway or the Frankston Blues pathway, I should say. Hopefully that's coming up big enough on everyone's screens. And, and as I mentioned, a lot of this information is in our handbook, our, our player and parent handbook. As you can see there, we have our introduction programs. Um, you know, obviously that's run through Franks and Basketball, the FDBA, not through necessarily Franks and Blues, but that is the mini hoops, the Aussie hoops, the holiday camps, game ready, all abilities, all of those programs. Um, you know, the governing bodies of the sport will run, you know, uh, hoop time and, and different programs then we hope that those programs will feed into a domestic competition, uh, be that ours or, or one of our neighbouring associations. Um, and, and we offer some programs that sit beside that, like our, um, like our rep prep and slam dunk holiday camp, domestic academy and things like that. Um, then if, if you're interested or if you're part of the Future Blues program, your talent ID'd, but if you're interested and your child's interested in trying out, um, you have the junior representative basketball where you would try out for the Frankston Blues, um, which which is the process we've just undertaken, and and that program sort of um, you know sits beside Basketball Victoria's, um, you know obviously their their programs and their talent ID camps and things like that. We have some rep camps that we'll run in the school holidays. We don't have a, a term by term rep program at this stage for Blues kids because we feel like they're already doing enough basketball and. We offer some things on the side like individual programs and there's some fitness and strength and conditioning and things like that. But we're so confident really in our, the depth of our coaching that uh, our coaching teams that, that we don't need to offer, you know, regular sort of sessions that, that, that um, you know, you might see at other associations. We feel as though the, the two sessions a week they're getting with their coaches are going to be um, really enough on top of their domestic, particularly early on. Um, then we move through to obviously the governing bodies running the, the BJBL and the elite junior basketball, um, you know, and, and uh, obviously that's, you know, that's state team selections, um, talent ID camps. We've got the SDP program, which is the state development program, which selection for that begins around bottom age under 14s. Um, you know, the state teams where they go away to nationals and represent Victoria and big country. Um things like things like that we do offer some you know elite academies uh, we have done in the past and as i mentioned we don't at the moment we may look to in the future uh, as they progress through the age groups 16s 18s and then now we have offer 20s as well then we offer our, our senior representative basketball which for, for for most of you you'll know is the big v teams the youth league teams which is under 23s and then our nbl1 men's and women's program that sit in that new nbl1 competition that was formerly siebel and then beyond that, it, it moves into the professional ranks. So we're talking NBL, WNBL, um, Opals and, and Boomers. So that's really a, a very brief snapshot of the pathway that currently stands at Frankston, but also, you know, in partnership sort of with BV and then with the, the WNBL and the NBL programs as well. Move on. Uh, just really quickly in terms of player and parent commitment, you're probably already realizing that it's it's significant. Um, so we've obviously got training as, as most of you know, and I appreciate everyone being so flexible and, and adaptable in terms of training starting last night. I know some people maybe missed the training because they weren't aware it was on. And, um, you know, I, I probably could have done a better job putting that in the, the heading of some of my emails at training started on the 16th, but don't, don't stress, you know, kids aren't going to miss out on spots because they miss that first training and, they're going to get plenty of opportunities to, to um, get on court with their team, including this Friday and Sunday. And 
Um, we will get as many sessions in as we possibly can before the end of the year. Um, generally, trainings are Sunday and Tuesday. Uh, this year, we do have a rare couple of trainings that sit outside that format just to, due to the, the number of teams um, and the need for flexibility upon the return to sport. So we do have a couple of teams training on a Monday and a Wednesday night. Games are always Friday. Um, except for the rare occasions in grand finals in the in the regional competition. Sometimes they'll play on a Sunday at the end of the season, but games are always Friday nights. Um, the additional additional commitment will be any, you know, any camps um, that you may look to enter your child or, or, or children into or that they might be selected into. Um, tournaments, obviously, which again we have information about that now, FAQs. Currently, there's only one mandatory tournament, and that's really for our VC level teams. If they finish in the top eight in the Victorian Championship competition, they, they gain automatic entry into um, what's called the National Junior Classic, which is run by BV. Um, in under-14s, if they finish in the top four prior to Queen's birthday, they also qualify for what's called the Australian Junior Nationals for under-14s. Um, we were very lucky to have our under 14 girls qualify this year. And then unfortunately it was canceled due to COVID, but that's a really prestigious competition, which we've, we've had some luck with our girls teams and our boys teams in the past. Financial commitment, um, again, registration fees, which hopefully you, you will all be across now um, and the layout of those, we, we're, we're still the lowest um, registration fee uh, in terms of number in, in, in the BJBL to our knowledge. Um, and that's not to say that we don't place a value on our, our rep program. It's just to say that we, um, you know, we, 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 we find it really important to keep fees down. They've increased slightly over the last two years, but we felt it was important to hold that number this year. Um, it's, it's, it's still at $490, um, $490 for the year. Uh, which can be broken down into installments and, and you guys if you've registered which hopefully you all have um, you'll receive those invoices on the on the 23rd of November um, the registration fees essentially cover the cost of training uh, the cost of the team entry into the league and then obviously the the cost of administration and then some coaching costs as well um, there's, there's the uniforms and merchandise, um, which hopefully you're all across. We have our fittings for new players this Sunday and next Sunday from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. at the, the stadium in the boardroom. Um, there's a financial commitment on game nights, which is the team sheet fees. And that's changed slightly this year and your team managers will provide more information around that. So you'll soon come to find that your team manager is the best resource for you. Um, you'll stop receiving regular comms from me and I will start to just communicate directly with the team managers and the coaching coordinators. And then your team manager will essentially um, coordinate your team. And we're in the process of locking in all of our team managers right now. Again, it's all happening very quickly, um, but we will get there and, and we've got our team manager meeting next Wednesday night. So this, this Friday will be, um, you know, it'll be great. We'll have some games. We've got referees. We'll have kids that aren't in uniforms, kids that are in uniforms, but it'll be okay. It's not an official game. It's just a chance for the teams to get together, have a run around and, and all of our players and coaches to be in the one stadium, which won't really ever happen again, as you'll notice throughout the season. So it's really good. Um, so yeah, that, that team manager will handle the team sheets. In the past, it's been a bit of a pain. If, if there's anyone that has been a part of the BJBL before in this meeting, it, it was last year very difficult because some associations were running lump sums um, in terms of, um, you know, the, 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 the cost of door entry and the team sheet all being rolled into one. And then other associations were running team sheet with $3 door entry still at the door for every spectator. Um, Thankfully, VJBL and Basketball Victoria have come out now and just made a mandate across the board that that, that is a lump sum fee. So that will be $125 um, per game, per team. Um, and that covers door entry as well. So you'll just be able to pay that. You may even be able to pay it up front and your team manager may even be able to pay it ahead of time. So you're not having to deal with cash on a Friday night and handing things over. Um, we equip the team managers with all the necessary tables and spreadsheets and, and um, what they need to be able to manage that money that is coming in from families. Um, and we, we take them through that. So um, you guys won't have to worry too much about that. Um, there is a travel you know, component financially. There is a fair bit of travel in the BJBL. It is a state competition. And whilst um, our teams that, that grade a little bit lower may get regionalised and not travel over the other side of the city too much, Expect to play some games at MSAC, Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre. Um, expect to play in Eltham, Diamond Valley, 
uh, kill scythe. Um, you shouldn't, I don't think too many will, will, will have to go to Bendigo and Geelong. You might have to go to Geelong, but there is a net neutral venue policy that if it's over, I think, 200 kilometres one way travel or something like that, then the neutral venue policy kicks in and we meet in the middle and play at MSAC or something like that. So I think for the most part, this, this, the new parents in this group will, will generally play no further than probably Diamond Valley, MSAC, maybe Geelong. Um, but across your you know, journey with Blues, which we hope is a long one, you'll probably cop a Bendigo or yeah, something like that at some stage. So be prepared for that. Um, and then there's obviously the additional financial commitment that may come through camps and tournaments and any SNC and stuff like that. You know, the little programs that we plug in on the side to supplement our, our core program at the Blues. Player and parent conduct. Again, I'm not going to stick on this too much. These documents are readily available. Um, uh, you know, the codes of conduct for Basketball Victoria shouldn't be too new to everyone because it's part of our domestic competitions as well. Um, it's essentially, you know, it's 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 fairly common sense in the in that you know you don't um, there's there's no abusive language. There's no um, anything towards the refs. Um, treatment of coaches is really important, and I'll get into that a little bit with regards to our grievance pol grievance policy. Obviously, really, it's just common sense dealing with people um, the way you would like to be dealt with and being respectful. Um, obviously, people are going to have opinions, and, and we're going to have differing of opinions. And you'll find that the team that you're in this year will become like a, a little family um, and, and anyone that's in a family, you know, you bicker with brothers and sisters, mums and dads, but it's important that um, it's handled in the right way. And, um, you know, our, co our codes of conduct, both Basketball Victoria and, and our own, um, you know, establish that and sit above that. So those documents are, are available on our website if you'd like to read through those a little bit more. Um, the grievance policy is an internal process we've implemented. And again, it's in the player and parent handbook. Essentially, if you've got a grievance or, or, or a disagreement at some stage with, with a parent or with a coach or with the team manager, um, the first step in the grievance policy is to deal directly with the person that the grievance is with in the, in the appropriate manner and at the appropriate time. That, that means do not talk to coaches straight after games, straight before games, definitely not during games. Um, it's really important that we respect our coaches. And as much as I know you may differ in opinions to our coaches at times, or you may feel like your child's not getting fair court time or not being fairly treated, I'll tell you right now that rep basketball um, at the younger age groups, um, Future Blues in particular, our double bottoms, there will be you know, a fair bit of you know, equal court time and all that sort of stuff. Um, but as you begin to progress through the age groups, and particularly if you start making our high performance teams sort of ones, twos and threes, um, there is no requirement for coaches to play everyone. You know, they'll do their absolute best to get everyone on the court, um, but it's not going to be like two minutes rotate everyone through. You know, it's, it's, it's about being competitive and about winning. And, and generally what, the way our coaches do it is they try and get it, all the players in in the first half or the first three quarters um, and then particularly to the back end of, of fourth quarters or second halves, it's, it's about winning those games, particularly in grading, which you'll see first up. So um, just keep that in mind that, that that is, you know, that's part of what being a part of representative program means. And domestic is, is more about fairness and everyone getting free, you know, equal court time. But being a part of a rep program is, is about establishing, you know, there is that competitive aspect to it now and introducing our kids slowly to that throughout the age groups fairly. Um, so yeah, again, dealing directly with the person um, is, is, is the first preference in the right um, manner. If it's a coach and you don't feel comfortable dealing directly with the coach, you can deal directly with the team manager and speak to the team manager and they may be able to mediate that process. Failing that, it then gets elevated to our junior Blues coaching coordinators who are Scott Christensen for the boys and Rebecca Lansing for the girls. It doesn't really get beyond that very often um, because those two, once they get involved, it, it, it then, especially if it's a problem with a coach, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's usually dealt with at that level, but failing that, then it would, I would get involved and I, I may mediate. And if there is an issue with the coaching coordinators, um, and you can't speak directly to them, then obviously I get involved and we would mediate as well. Um, and at that stage, that's, that's a stage we don't want to get to because that's the stage where we start to talk about, um, you know, what, 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 you know, do you want to stay in the program? Essentially, we're starting to think you can't, you know, we, we can't figure things out at a coaching level or a team manager level. 
coordinators can't figure it out and find a solution. And then, you know, it's myself and, and possibly a board member, um, our blues chairperson coming in and trying to mediate. And if we can't sort that out, then, you know, it, it's, it's not great news, but uh, I've been at the association four years and um, I think that's happened once. So yeah, it's, it's never really gotten to that point. And I'm sure it won't with this group. <laughs> not trying to scare you by any stretch of the imagination either. I think anyone that's met me knows I'm not very scary. Um, resources for you guys that will be really, really valuable. And I know I've leaned on these a little bit and I'm conscious of not going too far over time. We will have some questions for probably about five minutes, but I do need to go at 6.30. Um, these are the best resources for you right now. Um, and I'll, our FAQs, I know they were down a little bit last night. Some of you may have emailed me. I apologize about that. Our, our, our media and comms manager is, is a phenomenal um, you know, operator and, and does some great things in the back end of our system for, for, our, for our website and our social media. But um, he decided to reinvigorate our Junior Blues website. So it looked a little bit more like the Triad Hub, which I might um, jump to, to now and, and try and sort of share with you. So that's it there. Now this is our, our Junior Blues kind of base. I can't really see my, whoop, can't see my mouse. There it is. This is our, this is our base here now. And you can see the schedule for Friday night um, with some information there sort of taking pride of place so that we can get through that. Obviously you can go back and visit the squad announcement at any stage. If you need to register, hopefully you don't because the cutoff was five o'clock last night. Um, you can go to our FAQs here. Um, these are a great resource and have a number of hyperlinks to um, some really great resources at both BV, but also, um, you know, information about tournaments when, you know, the great, when does the season start? What do the dates look like? You know, uniform costs, contacts for our, our merchandise coordinator, um, you know, and the list goes on information about our fees and the financial commitment. Um, you know, if you, if you want to be a team manager for one of your teams, speak to the coach and you can fill out that form. The link for tonight, obviously, link for the handbook um, and my contact details and then a bit of information about your role as a parent. And, and then we've got our player parent handbook, which again is, this is a more sort of all encompassing resource that talks more broadly about our Frankston basketball program. Um, you know, with regards to the history and, 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 and a bit of the background of our association here, um, obviously contact details, you've got myself, you've got Brenda Cotter, who's on our board, you've got the coaching coordinators, you've got Daniel Spangler, who's our comms and marketing manager, if you need to contact him, if you've got media and photo requests or questions about those things, this is our Blues working group, so the people you would have seen through tryouts that um, uh, saved me from going prematurely bald or grey. Um, they are just phenomenal, all volunteers. That's chaired by our, our Blues chairperson. And then, yeah, the information just sort of goes on with regards to our pathway. And so there's a lot of information in there. There's the you know, season calendar and things like that as well. So that's a really good resource. And, uh, and then obviously, yeah, there's information in here like the BJBL calendar. If you want to try and plan trips away, um, you know, for next year, you can... You can get in as Arena. She's she's moved away, unfortunately, but there's a Blues player on the BB website. We'd like to see that. Um, there's our season calendar there. So we've got grading Friday, 3rd of December, as you know, and um, all the way through to the end of next year, as you can see, end of term three next year. So that website will be a really good um, um, resource for, for you guys as well. Um, I'll head back to our presentation. I'm conscious of time, but um, if anyone would like to, the type questions you want, um, or chuck your mic on. I'll do my best to answer on the fly. I've only got about five minutes. Um, that's not because I'm trying to get away from you guys. I legitimately did almost double book myself, but I think most of you have my mobile number. Um, you definitely have my email. If you have any questions, um, feel free to jump in now and fire away. Otherwise, um, I'm happy to take phone calls, particularly at this stage, given that um, things i won't use the word rushed because i feel like we're fairly prepared but um things things have happened pretty quickly so um i understand there will be some questions uh good question from carol when do we get to sign the code of conduct form that will be um administered by the team manager so the team manager will get the codes of conduct form from me it's just a bit of a, a form where you know we give the, the the team manager and it gets all the parents will sign the code of conduct on behalf of their child, as well as the coaches, the team managers. Um, and then we get, we collect those back as an administrative team so that we've just got a, a bit of a formalization that you've read the codes of conduct and you under uh, conduct and you understand um, what is that sort of baseline for behavior and, and what is expected of 
of parents. Uh, Emily, uh, do we pick up the training pack? Um, sorry, I'm getting more questions. Whoa, everyone. Do we get uh, the training pack on Sunday? No. So training pack and uniforms, and uh, sorry, training pack merchandise can be purchased at any time that the merchandise store is open. So that is FDBA competitions hours. You could go in right now and get your new player packs. Um, there's, there's stadium supervisors and, and retail staff on hand to, to fit you in our merch store. So that this Sunday is purely for uniforms, um, purely for uniforms. It won't be collection of merchandise and backpacks and training singlets. That needs to be done during our competitions hours. So you've got a great opportunity, obviously, um, I, I believe it will be open Friday night um, because we are taking door door. Um, we are taking team sheets, um, but also all day Saturday there'll be someone in there that you can go in and get fitted for things. Um, so no, so and you don't need to book down book book for the sizing this Sunday. We haven't set up a booking system, so we'll just manage traffic flow as best as we possibly can. But again, if everyone can just be sort of patient with that process, because we'll probably only have three or four people in there helping Lauren with the uh, with the sizing. Um, training players uh, Friday games I I'm happy for that's a good question something I hadn't really thought of I'm happy for training players to attend the games um, probably best if if maybe if parents don't attend but look I, I think we're okay with regards to our density limits if parents and one parent and the training players wish to attend I will be uh, sending out a recording of this Sherry yeah absolutely I'm recording this and this will, will be sent out um, or will be made available on that fancy new website our digital media uh, guru put up uh, is there training for learning how to score rep yes great question Amber and this is one of those things that in the, the hastiness of everything getting going I hadn't communicated but on the 28th and I'll send out information about this I, I try and space out my emails to you guys so you don't just get sick of seeing my name pop up in your email inbox but on the Sunday the 28th um, and also the Thursday that follows that I think it's the 2nd of December we're offering um, a, a score table um, school ran by our technical official coordinator Tam Philippe um, so she'll go through um, score bench how to how to do score bench and and also shot clock for any um, potentially any parents that need to learn how to do shot clock for BC and for under 16s and under 18s. Uh, Lisa can the kids still participate in school absolutely they can yeah we'd love to still see them in the school holiday program I mean it's, you know, most of you, I think, have seen our holiday programs. They're, they're, they're a bit of fun. They're not going to be, they're probably not going to be to the same level of seriousness as, as their rep programs, as, you know, the rep program is now and their trainings will be. Um, but if, if they want extra chance to get on court, and get shot, play basketball, then those camps are the place to do it because they pretty much just have a ball in their hand all day. So for our younger kids, we quite often we've seen um, this year that a lot of our rep kids, particularly our future blues, still did our holiday camps. Um, and all, all, although they're just they're fun and games a little bit, um, you've still got some great coaches that have played Seabull, played NBL one, or are currently playing in our NBL one and Big B. So it's a great chance for them to sort of integrate with our senior players and some of our leaders within our senior program. Uh, Nathan, you can pay the full fees rather than instalment. So when that invoice comes out, if you'd like to just pay that in one big lump sum, you can. Um, instructions around how to pay that will be included in the invoice. But essentially, if, as long as you include your invoice number and, and it's, a, it's a direct transfer, um, we'll be able to track that within zero. And if you've paid your full fees, then our finance manager will be able to manage that side of things. And yes, Haley, I did say, I think I said the 23rd, but uh, sometime in the next week or so, there will be an invoice come out. The first instalment, um, you've all obviously already paid the $50 acceptance fee, hopefully. Um, the first instalment, I believe off the top of my head, I should get the FAQs up so I don't misquote myself, I believe is 170. Um, and that's due by, I think the 14th of December. And then each of the next, in, oh, sorry, the next instalment after that is, is also 170. And that's due by the 1st of Feb. So it's, it's basically as we come back um, after school holidays and then the last instalment, the third instalment would be due by March, the 1st of March. Um, we've front loaded it a little bit this year and it's, you know, it's, it's maybe a bit hectic, um, but hopefully our families can manage it. And, and look, this isn't for everyone, but it, it is, if you do, if there are any difficulties with regards to fees and you weren't expecting the cost for whatever reason, don't think you have to pull your kid from the program. As I've mentioned, we, we pride ourselves on the fact that our fees are the lowest in the state, basically. And we also pride ourselves on the flexibility that we offer through the invoicing. Um, if you need to pay in installments um, or even smaller installments or a more flexible payment plan, 
um, please just contact me and I'll speak to our finance manager and we can maybe arrange something. That's not for everyone, but if, if, if you are having difficulties in that space, we don't want kids missing out just purely because of finances. As long as we can see some form of financial commitment across the season, you know, we're, we're comfortable. We're not trying to send any parents and, and anything bankrupt, particularly for those that might have multiple kids in the program. Um, and Erin and Mayhan, uh, this will be my last question. Sorry, guys, because I do need to get going. Do training players have a chance to be selected for a team next year? Of course. Yep. Particularly in our future blues, because right now the way that it's structured, there's eight teams in the under 12s. So that's three top age or predominantly top age, three bottom age, two double bottom age, what we call double bottom age or future blues, 2013 born. So then next year, if you think about it, when they come to tryouts, there's three teams. For them to make it into so there's 30 spots after only having 20 this year um, they've also got the opportunity to be elevated throughout the year um, if players do withdraw from the program which does happen um, due to them not you know not not enjoying it anymore or not understanding you know maybe not being aware fully of the commitment and things like that so there's opportunities for them to be selected this year but certainly um, there is opportunities for them to be selected next year and they don't need to come through the new rep player tryout process again they'll go straight into the junior blues because they've been a train, training player all year so guys i'm gonna to have to wrap things up there i apologize i apologize for having to end so abruptly um this recording as i mentioned will go up on the website you got you've got my email um my phone number if you, if you need to reach out please do um it's great to meet you all digitally i look forward to meeting you all in the stadium no doubt probably across friday night and sunday next tuesday in the, in the coming weeks um it is a bit overwhelming. There's a lot going on, but thank you all for your patience and your support as we work through this. And we're really excited to have you as a part of the club. So thank you all and see you, uh, see you and talk to you soon. Thanks, Jared. Thanks everyone. See you later.